Hi everyone, welcome to another Friday Elevate.Strategy Leadership Live Series. Uh, as you know, I started this series about five weeks ago, uh, and it's really to tell the story and journey of uh, leaders who have journeyed through their career to where they are today. So I'm Simeon Wong, I'm the host and founder of Elevate.Strategy. I help executives uh, find meaning in their career and build up their career to their dream job one step at a time. And so all of my guests so far up to date, uh, I posted earlier last week, I think, around what I've learned so far from my four previous guests. And among them were things like transparency, the importance of that, uh, the importance of honesty, uh, the importance of humility in learning your career journey and, and such as like. So, uh, welcome to the show today. If you're joining us live later on, let us know where you are, where you're coming from. If you're from Facebook or LinkedIn, that'd be great. Uh, I know many of you are going to watch the rebroadcast. So uh, certainly after the rebroadcast, I always encourage you to uh, look out for and contact the speakers and uh, and the leaders that I invite onto the show. They're, they're Generally speaking, my friends are very kind. So um, just a quick update about Elevate this week. We've had uh, some very wonderful placements from some executives in the U.S. primarily, but uh, the market in Canada is, is moving quite quite steadily in, in oil and gas and financial services. So, uh, you know, hopefully if you're in that area, if you've got technology background or if you've got uh, competencies like uh, innovation, that uh, you'll find uh, good good success in your, in your pursuit wherever you are. So uh, today we have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Mark Bowden. And I'll tell you why he's special to me. Um, two years ago, as many of you know, I left the corporate world and I started off my journey in executive coaching, something that I'd love to do uh, with, with a great passion. And Mark was kind enough, I was introduced to him by a mutual friend and he was kind enough to take coffee with me uh, for, for just a coffee date. And he, I picked his brain back then and you know he had written a book and, and I asked him a whole bunch of questions. We'll talk to him later about that, whether he recounts that, but one of the things he said to me was, uh, find something you're good at and excel in that. So anyway, without further ado, let me just introduce Mark to you. Uh, Mark Bowden has been voted the number one body language professional in the world for two years running. So yes, now is the time to sit up straight, even if you're sitting at home. Mark is the founder of communication training company, Truth Plane, whose clients include leading business people, politicians, presidents of four, Fortune 500 companies, and prime ministers of G7 powers. That's, that's quite the combination. With years of experience training people across the globe on how to use digital media most effectively for better communication, Mark is now even a trainer for Zoom, equipping their new employees with best practices around virtual communication. Mark's TED Talk has reached millions of people and he is regularly called on by media to comment on body language around elections and debates most recently appearing on the Dr. Phil show. Mark has written four books on body language and human behavior, including recent bestseller, Truth and Lies, What People Are Really Thinking. In case it's not clear yet, he's one of the most foremost authorities in the world on verbal communication. We're thrilled to have him here today, and please welcome Mark. Hey there, good to see you. Nice good to be here yeah. with Thanks. you. Thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. My pleasure. Well, you know, all I've been doing really for the last, I guess, year and a half is sitting here 
talking to people. Yeah. Uh, so you're yeah. very welcome in my home today. Uh, I know last time we saw each other, we were actually just round the corner from my home, uh, down on uh, Bloor and St. George, and I think Mercato Coffee Shop, which I hope is yeah. is still going to be thriving by the time we get back. Yeah. Uh, well, I remember that 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 date vividly because I was nervous. I was very nervous. I knew I knew what it was that you did. I watched your TED talk. And I just wondered, you know, what kind of person you were, whether you're personable and you were and you were just genuine and awesome. And I fired all kinds of questions at you around what it's like to be a coach, a professional in this in this industry of, of, of equipping people to succeed. And you gave me a whole bunch of tips. One of them was uh, and you won't remember this, but I had gone down the journey of wanting to write a book and I left corporate and I was I was I was I had so much to say about leadership and some negative experiences that I had and sort of, you know, why that's not good. And you said to me, don't go down that path because it's a long, arduous path. And, you know, you might, if you do well, you're well, if it's not, then, you know, it's just going to have a shelf life for two weeks and that's it. Um, your books are clearly done well. Uh, I've had a chance to read through uh, the latest one and not the whole thing, but I've read enough clips of it to kind of understand where you're coming from. So, uh, and there's a lot there. So for those of you who, are you know are looking for resources around body language and communication i really do urge you to look up mark's four books and take a look at them uh but mark yeah i mean you had a real pivotal role to play and 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 uh and now i hear i am where here i am I'm, I'm not tremendously successful but i love what i do and i'm successful enough to be able to do what i love doing so that's great um so mark one of the things that as i as i learn about leaders journeys is I, I i like to start from the end and work backwards a little bit so i know many people know you already in the industry but maybe for those who are not as familiar with your work what is it that you do today yeah so let me give you the rundown i'm mark bowden i'm an expert in human behavior and body language and i help people all over the world to stand out win trust and gain credibility every time they speak including some of the leaders of the g7 i do all of that mainly sitting here right now uh, through podcasts like this with you, Simeon, uh, through webinars, through uh, keynotes via virtual communication like this. I make videos, right? YouTube, right. you know, and, and I have a YouTube show as well with my friends, the Behavior Panel as well. Yeah, okay. All kinds of ways that I get that information across to people. Right. Is that a regular show that's on right now? Because I, I need to catch up on that. If that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to get involved in that. So the behavior panel, we come out uh, once a week, uh, usually uh, usually every Thursday, depending okay. what might be happening in the news or uh, how fast Scott is at getting the editing uh, done. But I'm I'm there with other preeminent body language experts, experts in human behavior, body language, and interrogation as well. Uh, and we talk about the behaviors that we see in lots of kind of populous culture situations okay. to help people, you know, stay safe, feel safe, uh, help people that they love, uh, understand other people way, way uh, better. We've got about, uh, I think about 300,000 subscribers right okay. now. Uh, yeah, so we're doing pretty well. I've got to catch up on that. That's, uh, that sounds awesome. Uh, now, for those of you I know who see this screen on your um, on your LinkedIn feed and are interested in it, click on it because then we see you and you can start putting in chat uh, questions or things like that. Uh, and, and don't be shy. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm learning about this technology every week, as you can see, Mark. So um, okay, so th that's what you do now. Now, one thing I picked up on right now was. I think you started off on a lot about body language uh, as a means of the communication aspect, but now have you sort of spanned over into also kind of the the verbal element of things and how that com comes together with body language? You talked about interrogation. You talked about kind of is is that kind of also in your in your in your wheelhouse as well? So all of this world of how do you communicate with people in a way that helps you understand them better, them relate with you much better, and them tell you things that they wouldn't normally tell people or, or in those particular circumstances, so that usually you can help them a lot more. That's always been my, 
my area, this area of often people call it influence and persuasion, interview, mm. uh, communication, sometimes the world, world of propaganda, how you get a mass message out there to millions of people and get them uh, engaged and, uh, and moving forward with an idea. That's always been my world. Mm. What I did was to approach this through the idea of nonverbal communication, partly because I was utterly fascinated by that area. And right. I'd already, already been well educated in that area. I was, I was already breaking some ground in, in that area. And so it seemed a, 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 an area of fascination and ability that I could already go down. Mm. Also in my mind, in my model, that was the fastest intervention into any communication situation, any problem, any issue with communication, that, that nonverbal entry, uh, in my experience, though you can intervene in a lot of different ways, that was just the most economical way of doing it. So I was like, well, why wouldn't we do it the, the, the cheapest, fastest way, the most effective way? So, right. but also in terms of how do I stand out and win trust and gain credibility, the, the, not many people were approaching communication from that point of view. And so it afforded me something very unique uh, and, and unique that I could say, look, you're dealing with, there are many communication uh, practitioners, advisors, coaches, uh, trainers that you could get out there. What you're going to get with me is the number one person in a certain field mm -hmm. in order to approach this from, rather than, look, you know, I'm a, I'll help you with my communication. I'm pretty good. Right. Uh, so so it, it, it's a way, you know, niching is a way to really stand out and use some of the abilities that you may have already worked on. Right. Gotcha. And you you said something earlier that was that piqued my 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 interest you said that you'd always been fascinated by this and and uh, to what extent did that happen and what how early were you when you were what happened that caused that fascination to to kind of click yeah so um before the age of 10 uh fascinated in sea life fascinated with the movement of 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 objects and elements and life uh, obsessed with that, obsessed with visual imagery. I was very good with visual imagery. In fact, it was right. really the best thing that I did as a, as a kid and probably still the best thing that I do is my ability to read, manipulate, form moving visual images that have an effect on people. So I got really obsessed with that and really good with that. And it just so happened in the UK, you know, there was there were things coming out, you know, there was this TV show and book from Desmond Morris, which, you know, for me was great because it had lots of pictures of people in it and people moving. So right. I was like, this, this stuff is great. It's got moving and this is an right. uh, my original copy from back in the 70s. You know, That's so the original you know, copy? That's the original copy from back okay. in the 70s. I still still have it there. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of like original books from the 1970s, 1980s, which is which are a, about some of that early um, obsession of mine. So I just got a, a, you know, a long history in being fascinated by this, obsessed and getting getting good at it. Uh, I'm right. dyslexic. So um, though, though. Uh, I'm pretty good with words in terms of what words are available to me and how you can put them together and how you can change people's minds with words. I'm not pretty. I'm not very good at writing them down, and I'm not very good at reading them. Uh, I mean, when I say very good, uh, I don't do it in the way that most other people do it. I just do it in a very different way. And so, you know, that afforded me again a different way of thinking about words and visual images. I don't put them together quite in the same way that most every other person would. Right. And, right. and I decided I was going to use that as a benefit, not as a risk. Gotcha. I have a question here uh, from Mandeep Malik. Hello, Mandeep. Good to, good to see you here. Yeah, good to see you, Mandeep. Uh, yes, he was wondering what book is that? What book were you referring to? Oh, OK. Um, Desmond Morris, Man Watching. Uh, now probably called people watching, I think. 
but originally it was a, a Granada TV series in the UK. Uh, it became a book, a very good picture book, which I like. Great. I like pictures. Pictures are really good. Uh, so it's probably that one you're thinking of. Um, it really, Desmond Morris is one of the most important founders of the idea of nonverbal communication and, and behavior and the popularization uh, of it. This all really starts with, with a guy you may have heard, with, heard of called Charles Darwin uh, and a French guy, Lamarck, at the same time, who was into some of the same stuff that Charles Darwin was right. into. I think, you know, really, um, uh, you know, second then comes i mean duchenne is is somewhere in there as well and then and then up comes uh desmond morris and and really starts to fascinate the world with the idea of human beings and human behavior in a in a popular way and that's you know partly what i'm trying to do is 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 make understanding people and and the models by which you can understand people better make them more popular make mm. it more popular for you right. to go, wouldn't it be great to understand people better? And that's a possibility. Like, I can do that. Human beings can understand each other better. It's a doable thing. And to try and um, eradicate this idea, or maybe it's just an ideal, that some people are just born better at understanding people. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't like that world. That's not a good world. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's a terribly, terribly dull world where if I don't get the right DNA, it's like, oh, you're just not very good at this. It's like, no, I want to be able to learn it. It's like, so who yeah. can teach me this? And yeah. this is learnable, as right. is everything. Everything can be learned. Gotcha. Yeah. And I think, you know, many, many people have been impacted by the message that you that you bring. I actually, as I talk to you, I'm thinking about using my hands. Uh, you know, I watch you, watch you quite a bit. So, um, and I was going to say something, right? So it can be learned, yes. And you're and you're teaching that. Uh, one of the things that uh, it's it's fun to do, and my my wife and I have done that before, is just sit at a coffee shop with a coffee and just watch people, right? Mm. And one of the things that's we've done before out of fun is to look at a couple at another table and wonder what they're talking about, right? And even have a little bit of fun with you know dialogue in our mind and, and playing it out. Um, I think something about body language is uh, is incredible in the sense that it can convey tremendous, you know, range of emotions that words can't even do, and so that's something that I've I've heard from you as well. Uh, and and one thing I find fascinating, and maybe let's just go back now. Then, uh, what was your earliest kind of training in? What did you want to be when you grew up? When you were when you were younger? Well, I know you love to watch people, but what what yeah. had that really happen? Yeah, well, the first thing, because I was, I was born in 1970, so the first thing I wanted to be was an astronaut. And, and, yeah. then, and, and so I was pretty adamant about that. And then teachers kind of told me that, that my math was never going to be good enough. And uh, unfortunately, I took them seriously uh, about that. And I really, shouldn't, I really should have ignored them. But I was just a kid. So, you know, you tended to pay some kind of attention to authority figures. At, at that point and think they might have a have a have the right idea right. maybe they did have the right idea i'm not quite sure but but anyway regardless of whether they had the right idea or the wrong idea i should have just ignored them just my math was being done in a different way you know just like letters numbers for me they don't quite work as most other people uh deal with numbers um uh, the reality is in my mind you know often if I do the math, I come up with a much better answer, much more interesting answer, a much more innovative answer. Anyway, so I wanted to be an astronaut. That 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 didn't happen. Uh, next best thing, uh, because I loved sea life um, and I loved the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau, another great TV series from in the 70s. Uh, so then I decided I wanted to be Jacques Cousteau. Um, and... Um, and so, yeah, I did do a lot of putting on a, a face mask as a kid and going underwater and and trying to watch fish and pick up, you know, crabs and, and anemones and starfish and and that was really that was really great. And and did that you, did you grow up near the water, near the sea? No, no, no. But you know, you know, family holidays, you try and get to the right. coast as much as you could. I, I I grew up in the in the Midlands of the UK, um, uh, which you know is where heavy metal came from and uh, and and the, and the Civil War. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's <laughs> where I grew up. It's completely landlocked. Uh, there's no right. sea there at all. I don't think there's there's no lakes. 
I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think that's why we had, we kicked off a civil war around there because it was just, it was, it was pretty treacherous to live there. Um, right. So, right. so yeah, you'd want to get to the coast and you want to get into the sea and you want to be moved by that water and get that wind in your hair. And um, so, so I wanted to be Jacques Cousteau. Um, and, uh, uh, and then, and then I, I, I saw a bit, another French guy, Marcel Mosso, the, the, the French mime artist. And I thought well, that's really good as well, because this guy is using movement to like create illusions and manipulate the world and the ideas that we have in our head. So this this idea of, of how does movement create an idea and a margo, a, a perfect image in your head mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. your brain will buy into as being utterly real. And right. that took me down that pathway. And, right. and so the pathway I entered into was, there's stuff I can show your brain and any brain, human brain on the planet that if it meets some minimum specifications for what it expects, just minimum specifications, it will get triggered into the thing is real. It's as good as so is. The brain is not a knowledge machine, it's a prediction machine. And wow. you don't need to give it much to predict. And if you give it the min spec, the minimum specifications of it, it just does is in its head. Now, once you understand that, and it's the same for words as images, once you understand your brain is predicting the world based on some minimal specifications, mm. you can now communicate in a super economic way and in an economic way by just giving minimum specifications in a super economic way that triggers that other person's brain to make things that are not true true or are not real real as good as real the real thing the same listen the same part of your brain that seeing the world right now is the same part of your brain that makes the images when you dream it's the same wow. so what do i need to do to trigger that imagination right something that is not true is is true now you might go well that sounds very dangerous because uh, you know, as 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 um, as you were saying, you know, everybody else has been on talking about transparency, honesty, and humility. You know, Ma Mandeep is here going. You know, not a lot of humility in the world, and that that might be true. But you know, transparency and honesty. People like you to be very transparent and honest, don't they? But you shouldn't let transparency and honesty kill a great story. Mm. Like, don't let humility right. kill a great story. Right. right, because right. we don't go anywhere without the world of imagination and possibility. So there's my my piece about that. Still love Jack Cousteau. I still want I still want the big Omega dive watch that Jack Cousteau uh, had the Ploprof dive yeah. watch. It's still in yeah. my mind. I want that big. That yeah, big I, 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 I remember that. Yeah, I was born yeah. in the '70s as well. There's so much to be unpacked uh, about what you said. In fact, there's so much more content to what you just said than what is what I've seen online, and kind of, and that really means that your repertoire of knowledge has really grown, and kind of you're teaching people this this idea of being able to trigger something in someone's mind such that it becomes real to them. That's a real skill, right? I, I find that it's it's a skill in sales, it's a skill in consulting. Um, Obviously, there's facts behind what's real to them, but the predictive element of things is helping people to kind of get one step ahead of themselves. That's kind of what I hear, right? Um, so it's not just in the moment, but, you know, if you did this, it's almost like a consequence. You know, here's what would happen, and I'm going to do it now, and here's what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Um, that's fascinating. So can you give me an example of where you apply that kind of uh, approach in teaching Let's say you, you talk, I, I've, I've seen you talk about interrogation and, and FBI and all this behavioral analysis. D does any of that fit into this? I'm fascinated by that, by the way. So, mm -hmm. so give me an example of where you've applied that and where it's been effective. Well, so it, it's, it's the core of the work, which is, which is stand out, win trust and gain credibility. Like, how do you know? How does your brain know? to focus on that person rather than all those other people? How does it make that choice? Mm. So 
I know the triggers that will cause you and other human beings to look at that person, to focus on that person, rather than all those other people? How do you stand out right. within those, you know, 7.6 billion people mm -hmm. on the planet? What is the mechanism that your brain was, was right. born with that causes you to know what to pick as being opportunity or, or risk? And then mm -hmm. how do we fit into the the bucket of opportunity what is it that you, what are the minimum specifications your brain needs to see in order to go that person is an opportunity not a risk you know so so and 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 in the right. different and how do i do it here and how would i do it live and how would right. i do that if i'm in a different uh, country group right. society how would i do that with it rather than the marketing people like what mm. are they looking for what right. is universal and what is particular to uh, one social group or one uh, group that is obsessed with a right. certain set of operations. So, so um, and credibility. So, so credibility is, right. is how do I know you can do this before I've ever seen you do it? Mm -hmm. Trust, mm -hmm. How do I know that to be true before I even have the information about that? Why, why do you wake up in the morning and trust that gravity is still working? Because it'd be a, a tricky world if every morning you went, I better test for gravity before I put my feet out of the bed. Right. So people live in that in, in, a, in a world, not, not that world, but it, it can feel shockingly close to right. that because, right. because their prediction system is crumbling uh, around right. them. None of the signals are coming that say that they can trust anything everything has to be calculated and pre uh, beforehand there's no smooth prediction system either because of what's happening up here or what the world is delivering to them and so if you bring somebody along who instantly gives them the minimum specific specifications they need for this is going to be okay this is going to be good this is safe then mm -hmm. the world starts pulling together for them so look really it all comes down to what, what i what i managed in my work to bring this down to was stand out win trust gain credibility like who doesn't want to stand out more like would you like to be seen more or seen less as a leader uh do you need to be seen as more trustworthy or less trustworthy there's nobody mm -hmm. on the planet that goes to me mark i have trust dealt with i am so trusted and trusted enough that more trust would be detri detrimental to me <laughs> and when it comes to credibility would you like to be seen as more credible there's nobody on the planet right. that goes at the moment my credibility is absolutely at its top whack at the moment i need no more because everybody's going yeah but i'm credible to these people but then you know the next step for me is going to talk to them and i don't think i have the credibility for them so the question becomes how are you going to do that mm -hmm. not not how are you going to like how are you going to do that it has to be doable you have to be in charge of it because you know m most people's strategy around this is I'll just keep on being me and they'll get it. Mm. It's, a, it's an okay strategy. It's an right. okay strategy, but I'm not backing you on that. Right. I would not lay money on you. Uh, and I might, I might lose on some outsiders, but on, on the majority of bets that I'm making over my life, right. Uh, right. You know, I'll just do what I always do, build it and they will come. They're not coming. They're not showing up for you. Yeah. It's, it, do you think, Mark, do you think that because a lot of my clients uh, have that problem, right? And mm -hmm. I, I t the, the language that I use is reinvention. It's, it's sort of saying that if you want, let's say you've been doing you know, finance all of your life and now you're a CFO, you're a VP of finance, and, but actually you have a heart for building people and capabilities, right? Trying to build up a function within a company that isn't there that requires hiring, training and all that you're going to have to pivot over and show that there's evidence that you've done something like that before. And, and the fact that you're credible, right? That, the, that as a recruiter, I can see that you've got, you've got examples like that. Um, is, is that, that's, is, is that similar to what you're saying is, is that because it goes back down to also what you said earlier, which was if you, if you, you're able to kind of convey uh, reality to someone by, 
uh, and pre predictability uh, for them by by using words, by using I guess a number of variety of different things. Um, I'm trying to bring it down to an example of where someone who's struggling, right? Someone right now, an executive who's kind of thinking about how do I use reinvention, my communication, my language to to kind of further myself in my career. I hope I'm being clear, but you know, what, yeah, what yeah. would you say yeah. when? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me try and help with that. And and you know, if you if you're watching this right now, which you are, so so watching this right now, yeah, think about what you would like the most important people in your business, in your organization, in your work, or, or the future of that that work as as a leader yourself. You know, what would you like them to be saying about you when you are not in the room? Therefore, what we're suggesting here is you have no coercive power over what they say. You know, there's no threat from you. What would you like them to be saying about you? Okay. You know, uh, right. you know, he is X, she is X, they are X, okay? What is that? What is that thing you want them saying about you? Now, that word that you have in your mind, how do you do that? Okay, mm -hmm. so you picked, you know, and I'll guarantee there's a whole bunch out of you, uh, you there that went that said the word integrity in your mind. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, well, how do you do that? It's it's not a thing right. in somebody's head. It's observable right. behavior. What is mm -hmm. the observable behavior of integrity? Because you need to be doing that when you walk down the corridor. You need to be doing that at the start of every meeting, at the end of every meeting, at every mm -hmm. point in the meeting. You need to make that choice, make that bigger, and keep it tidy. You need to decide on that is who you are. That is your guiding star. Mm -hmm. You head for that star. Mm -hmm. You make a big star. And don't give yourself other things. Well, I want integrity, honesty. I'd like a bit of humility. And let's let's add some transparency just to so it favors everybody, so everybody can be included. That's too muddy. We won't get it. That's not communication. That's right. that's a dog's dinner. Okay. Right. Right. So you're just trying to please everybody right, right now. Okay. Pick an ideal. Yeah. Pick an ideal. Yeah. Okay and do the behaviors of that ideal. And the last thing I want to add to that is, is I want you to say that word as much as you can to as many people as you can. Mm, okay? Okay. So okay. If, if I picked integrity, and it probably wouldn't be one that I would pick because it's hard to observably do. Right. Right. in the moment so if you pick that it's like ah oh, you picked yourself the same thing that everybody's saying okay so then it doesn't going to stand out anyway and right. you've picked yourself a hard one but at least what i would do is i'd say look everybody thanks for coming to the meeting let's do this with real integrity so i say the word right i sure. say the word i would say to them afterwards thanks for your integrity during this meeting Okay, I would say that word as much as I can, because right. then I'm going to find out that they're repeating it back at me. They're saying it about me. Right. But you right. need to create the images and the word and the syntax and the and the and the viewpoint that constantly communicates the ideal that you are after. Right. And not only in your own mind, but in other people's minds as well. I hope that that kind of, um, you know, because I wish I could say to you, hey, look, just do the, do this thing. This is the thing that you all must do. But I don't know what you're trying to achieve. I don't right. know what you personally are trying to achieve. So the best thing I can do is, is help you go, you need to pick something. You need to mm -hmm. make a choice. You need to make it bigger. You need to keep it tidy. And you've got to communicate that thing verbally right. and non-verbally as much as you can humanly afford and tolerate. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and that sounds to me uh, maybe oversimplifying, but it's it's sort of a personal brand, right? It's You're absolutely that. me going out there and saying that this is who you are and this is what you're about. Um, and, and to me, that's also a sign of passion, right? What are you passionate about? If you're passionate about integrity, then you want to become someone who has integrity. And as you said, of course, it's very difficult to, to observe that. Um, 
I want to go back a little bit. Uh, uh, we have our Arena here. Hi, Arena. Good to hey, see Arena. you for joining. Um, she has a question, and Arena and I used to be coworkers together, so I kind of know where right. she's coming from. Um, so she says, sometimes leaders are not always providing an honest, transparent feedback. How can you tell when someone is honest and transparent? What words would they use? What body language? Wow. Hmm. Okay, so let's pick apart that question. Um, because I don't know which particular leader Arena is talking about, but my guess is she has somebody in her mind. And so this yeah. isn't a generalized question. Uh, Arena, my guess is, is you know the person or the people you're talking about. It. This isn't a generalized question. Sometimes uh, leaders are not always providing an honest, transparent feedback. You know, how can you tell? Well, you must have told at some at some point, else you wouldn't know that sometimes they're not being honest with you. You must have caught them being dishonest. So then the question is, is how did you tell then? Because it, it denotes from that question that you already know. And if you don't already know, it means you fear they're not being honest with you, but you don't have the data to, to mm -hmm. actually back up that fear. So you are at the moment either in a world of, of knowing what the signals are about this specific person and wanting some kind of verification from me, okay? <laughs> Which it sounds like you already know, okay? And you don't need an expert's verification. Or you fear people are dishonest with you and you'd like to know when they are and when they're not because you're worried you can't tell. And uh, so with the first, with the second one there, yes, people are dishonest with you. Uh, they are not transparent with you. And by the way, uh, Arena, uh, you are not honest with people and, they're not, and you're not transparent with them. Uh, you know, because you're a human being. I'm not honest with people. I'm not transparent with people. Uh, being, right. Lying is one of our most important social skills as is sure. telling the truth. The key is, yeah. is to know when to do one and the other in order right. for it to get on socially, right. okay? okay? So, okay. so, so look, it's, it's not as, there are, let's narrow this down, there are no single indicators to honesty and dishonesty. The mm -hmm. best thing you can do, the best thing you can do is look for uh, significant changes in people's nonverbal communication. If you're looking for honesty and dishonesty, significant uh, significant changes in people's nonverbal communication and use that as a trigger for asking them more questions okay so you suddenly somebody's talking to you they're giving you feedback and suddenly they're doing something very very different nonverbally than they were before okay great that's your yeah. point to go can you just elaborate on what you're saying right now could you just give me a clear example and evidence of what you're saying right now. Now here's your problem. Now you're doing interview and interrogation. And you might fear, okay, number one, that you're not in a status position to do that, which could be true or false. But also you might also fear knowing the truth. Here's the problem with not accepting people's lies is you run the risk of having to understand the truth of things. And that can be more painful than the lie. Sometimes it's just easier to accept the lie. So look, right. I'm not sure, Arena, I'm answering your question in the way you'd like, but yeah. I'm hopefully answering it in a in a, in a more truthful and honest uh, and way. Yeah, yeah, and transparent know, I, way, I, which may not be helpful. No, uh, I I think I th I think what you're saying is that what you said earlier is that there is no one clear indication of honesty and transparency, because what one person you know foresees is like you know crossing your arms you know, may culturally be different as far as, you know, I'm not close. I've seen you, I've seen your TED talks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the body language may, it may not mean anything. And a lot of it is contextual. A lot of it is, you know, uh, a longer term observation of how that person behaves, right? Yeah. Yes. Most of the time we're reading body language. It, it's a, it's a Rorschach test. Of, right. Of what sure. we're actually, uh, you know, it's a projection of right. what, of right. what, and that's the difference between creating body language on purpose. Right. And when you do it on purpose to influence and persuade, you are stacking the deck of right. cards in that Rorschach test. You right. are basically 
you are you are creating an environment around that test so that when you show them the the card you know that they're going to say it's a bat right gotcha yeah because i created the environment that you would say it's a bat okay why because the bat is better for them at that point it's better for everybody right. we'll all go further based on the on the bat but right. it, it could have been right. something else i mean somebody else who you haven't primed in the right way will mm -hmm. tell you it's a witch okay uh anyway i hope that's that's helpful yeah sure that's uh, right. mandeep says uh what about the old adage that actions speak louder than words yeah i think that's 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 kind of what your premise of of a lot of this or what you're talking about is right um i you know it, it seems also what you're saying is that uh actions are great uh verbal communication is limited but when you put the two together it can be very powerful, right? It really tells you the full, complete picture of what it is that you're trying to convey to someone. Right, uh, yeah, if I, if I form some words into a sentence whereby it informs you of the way the world is going to be, right. and then right. actions show up that confirm that, it's pretty hard for you to get out of that being true now. Now, that, none of that may, meant it was true, by the way, but it's harder for you to get out. If I just say something and then you don't observe it, You've got an exit point, okay? If I just show you something, but I haven't primed you with the words of what you will see, mm -hmm. it's very easy for you to reform what it was that I showed you in your own mind. You put all of these things together, and that's just two elements of how you're mm -hmm. gonna create an environment whereby your, your, your subject is very much now locked into a, into a reality uh, you can you can have other people saying the same thing. You right. can have uh, other entities and elements displaying the same the same pieces. You can show right. elements of history, yeah. That 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 sure. show it to be be factual. No, yeah. None of these mean it is. Uh, yeah. But look, you're trying to you're trying to manipulate the world. Literally, M Manny, use your use your hands, use your dexterous nature. The hands are dexterous, the words are dexterous. The same part of the brain, uh, you know, uh, uses um, uh, drives both the fingers and and the words. They're they're linked in many many ways. You're using that in order to describe a world that you prefer. Right. I'm going to go back to a, a comment that Mandeep just also said, which was he believes that lies are the new truth i just kind of flashed up there but uh i'll come back to that well ever ever has it been so <laughs> i'm not sure i'm not sure you know <laughs> I, i'm not sure when you showed up on the world mandy but uh yeah. you know I'm, I'm sure you're not you, you're not so fresh to it that you don't that you don't recognize that um that it wasn't even a postmodern world that created the idea of there's there's a lot of opportunities of ways to um, uh, to interpret data uh, that comes and right. and the mix right. of lies and truth. You know, it's no surprise that my latest book we called Truth and Lies w way before people had coined the idea of the post truth world. And I and I we you know we talk about that in in the book before that idea was coined simply because yes in a postmodern world these ideals of there being there being no you know stable fact um, mm -hmm. uh, but these these are old old ideals that have been around a long 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 uh right. Right. time yeah yeah and you know what i'd love to do mark is to bring you back later on to talk about because i think there is again i'm going back to the the idea the idea of the, the career journey right so um you know, as you, as you, I don't, I don't know about you, but as I've, you know, I came from a 20 year corporate background, as I grew in that world, I realized that I had to kind of hold back some truth many times in order mm -hmm. for me to get what I needed. Right. And holding back the truth could or could not equate to lying, depending on what the situation is. So that's a really deep philosophical thought. Yeah, yeah. We can come back. We can talk over coffee, a second coffee. And well, you know, it, it, it's so deep and philosophical that uh, St. Augustine wrote many, many books on exactly that because right. it was sure. such an important. So that's why I say, you know, gosh, you know, truth has become the new lies. It's like St. Augustine was saying the same thing. 
way, way back. This is not sure. a new idea for human beings right. by any stretch of the imagination. We've been dealing with our realities and other people's realities for a, for a, for a long, long time. Gotcha. We have a, 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 a lengthier question, um, and this is kind of hearkening back to your mm -hmm. training of Zoom now um, for use of that. So as we return to office environments, mostly hybrid, later this summer into the fall, what counsel can you provide to us after being in Zoom team meetings world where we were sometimes more informal or it was too easy to mute or dim the video? I guess that's the <laughs> end of it. Yeah, yeah, it's easy, easier to uh, escape potentially. But yeah. also, you know, when you weren't escaping and when you were there, people were in your home and they got they potentially got to know you even more intimately than they had before. They've seen you under real crisis. Uh, you know, they've seen you under under one of you know the century's most extraordinary crises. So that's so so you you were able to hide and not hide at the same time. And what are you going to do when you get back to work? How are you going to hide and not hide there? Because both things are important. Super right. important to hide. No right. downside in hiding. It's a good right. thing. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, downside in revealing yourself. It's a good thing. You just got to know when to do it. Okay. Yeah. There is no look. There is no bad behavior. There's just results that you wanted or didn't want. That's all. So, um, so look, here's, here's what I know to be true in, from behavior is, is we spring back to our old behaviors pretty quick. Okay. So, so whatever, it, however the office used to work, if, if, if the environment can move back to that, like if the, if the, if the brakes are taken off, essentially, if there is like, you, okay, you can do everything that we, we have no constraints anymore, okay? There are no rules of you must wear a mask, you must keep a certain distance. You, it will not take long to spring back to the old behaviors. So that feels, that sounds pretty good. Right. Um, now, the problem is in spring back, what we notice in behavior during that spring back, it can be chaos. However long that spring back lasts, mm. and it's pretty quick, okay? Right. And I can't give you an exact time because it, it depends on what the thing is. But right. spring back is faster than you usually expect. But there is a level of chaos. And right. so during that, and so you want to be having conversations with people straight off, um, which, says, which says, how are we going to behave? How are we going to manage this with each other? So look, let me give you an example of this. Uh, Simeon, because we're here together, um, and uh, let's just say, Simeon, that I know that we are going to meet, you know, at that same coffee shop as we met at, and we're going to do that uh, next week. Okay, so let's just say that. I would get on a on a call with you just like this, and I'd go, "Hey, Simeon, so I know we're going to meet uh, next week at the coffee shop. I just wanted to work out with you what your feelings are at the moment in terms of, you know, previously we would we would have met each other." shaking hands, sit down at the table together, yeah. All of yeah. it would be sweet and, 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 and whatever. Just want to check in with you. What are your feelings? Um, I mean, I can go with my feelings about how we might want to, you know, get back to that. But mm -hmm. uh, do you want to go first on that? Or, or, or do you want me to say what I'm thinking about it? Is that a real question for me? Yeah, why, not? why not? Let's do a real question. I love a great, uh, you know, I have found that uh, ever since the lockdown, that even social interactions in the park with strangers or even friends have, have been slightly awkward, right? Yeah, yeah. Been, I'm not entirely sure how to start a conversation. It's almost like I have some social anxiety disorder, which I don't usually have, right? So if you're asking me, I think that I would hearken back to the, co the conversation that we had two years ago, and I would remember the kind of person you were and I think that that would kind of form my my idea, right? And I would yeah. say for me, it's it's I'd be, I'm very comfortable with that. So, you know, let's let's go for it. Let's 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 cool. catch up with me. Cool. Um, cool. But it's interesting that you would check in with me on that. Would you do that yeah. with everybody? Yeah, yeah. Because why? Because otherwise, I'm just going to guess, aren't I? And 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 you know, I got this thing called a neocortex, which which I've only had for the last hundred thousand years, two hundred thousand years, sorry, and it's a major burden to carry a neocortex, uh, like a third of every breath that I take has to go into that. So, and it, so why don't I use it? 
Like it's a major burden. It'd be better off. I would be so, I'd probably be, the, the reality is as human beings would be probably so much happier without one. So, so, so given that it causes so much pain going, God, oh, what's the future going to be like based on the past? Like, you know, uh, what's going to happen? Why don't I just ask people? So look, let me give you, let me tell you my thoughts on it. Uh, Simeon, if, if we were to meet next week, um, by that time, I'll have had a couple of vaccines. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very, very confident about my safety in, 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 in environments. I'm very confident that, that if there is a risk out there, that it isn't going to be carried on my hands or your hands. Or, so I'm, I'm going to be really open to like doing the normal kind of shaking of hands and that kind of thing. Right. Um, but but g give me your feedback on that. Are you going to be open to that? What do you, what do you thought? I, I got no criticism either way, by the way, but I just wanted to check out with you. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I would be okay with any of that. Yeah, yeah I think cool. be, uh, I would, I'm welcoming back that, the lack of the, the element of the, what was it, 3D but in 2D? You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Um, there's a phrase, I don't remember where I heard that from recently, but... Um, Yes. Yeah. Short answer is yes. For me, I would have no problem with that. And I'd love to, you know, I know right. many people who would have some issues with, you know, sure, that's, that's, I'm, I'm okay with, with that, but I just wanted to check out with just the two of us, you know, so that the start of our meeting isn't, I just want to avoid that awkwardness that we don't For really sure. know. It's yeah. kind of like, it's kind of like during the lockdown when some people were more careful about health than they caution that. So you kind of, you know, went to, if you're sitting on the porch, you'd be like, Try and assess someone and say, "Are you, yeah. are you okay?" If I yeah, kind of closer yeah, and, yeah. But, so uh, we all we all we did was we just had that conversation. Though you know, for anybody watching that, it might feel a bit weird, and it might have felt a bit weird to us. Hey, maybe, but ultimately, it means when we get together face to face, we've already done what I would call a social contract. Mm. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean like you are locked into this contract because you could send me an email going, Mark, I've had second thoughts about this. It's like, that's okay. <laughs> send me the email. Send me the email going, I've thought about what you said. And actually, you know, here's my risk assessment on it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But understand, we, we, have, we have this evolution of language for a reason, which is co-option, like to get mm. together and do things smarter, faster, more often. Okay, and so and so right. that's all I'm trying to use is my language skill to go. That's all I'm using. It's just language mm -hmm. to to do mm -hmm. to, to future think, yeah. Uh, and so, look, I hope that was useful for people to because because essentially, that's my advice at the moment is use your words before an event to get an idea of what what are what your behaviors are going to be. Let people know and let people know some of your expectations and get to know their expectations and that way you can negotiate what's going to happen i hope that makes makes sense to you and everybody yeah for me just i'm just going to shut this door here guys sorry you yeah. talked about this it's kind of in line with the question right what happens you know i can hide behind this one second here. <laughs> you can i can hear the uh there's clearly chaos happening <laughs> happening out there yeah this is where, whereabouts because you are you're in you're are you in Toronto, I can't remember when we met whether you traveled yes. in or yeah. I'm no, I'm in Toronto. I'm in Toronto proper in um in uh around the midtown area. So all right, lovely. Um but uh yeah, I mean I think uh you know oh great advice, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Lots of lots of praise. Madeep says very insightful. Um lots and lots of stuff there, Mark. I, I did not expect uh so much content. So um I will have to digest this and come back and ask you to come back again. But I'm, you're very welcome. Look, you know, I, I just sit here all day, every day, at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. you know, and 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 as everybody here from LinkedIn knows, you know, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. So, look, if you if you if you're watching me right now and you're not linked in with me, make sure you link in with me because I will link in with you. And 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 people, you know, like Mandeep here, know that I'm, you know, pretty active and and yeah. and I'm I'm. I'm, tr I'm only trying to help you, you know, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to help you and, it, and, and, and my help won't cost you anything. So, and I'm, I'm, so I'm not letting you go yet. I'm not letting you go. Yeah, no, no, go. I'm, I'm cool. Um, yeah. I had a, um, let me just jump straight to um, the question about weakness, weakness and failure. Okay. Um, 
one of the things that I gave my TED talk last year was uh, the use of failure to propel you to passion, yeah. not so much success for that. Can you share with us maybe, you know, simply one or two struggles, obstacles that you've had to overcome to kind of get to where you are? And, you know, it doesn't need to be a, a lengthy thesis, but, you know, I'm always interested in knowing that. Yeah, I'm just going to say to Irena, she says, her husband says that I'm awesome. Your, your husband is a very wise man. He probably doesn't know a lot about a lot of stuff, but on that, as you probably well know, but on that, he's, 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 he's spot on, by the way. Um, okay, failure. Yeah, I may have an alternative view <laughs> on failure. I'm like, I'm just like, avoid it at all costs. And, and, the reason, <laughs> and the reason I say that is partly because, you know, Simon, mean, you've done a great, a great, you know, TED talk on that. And so, and so people should do, should, should watch that. Uh, and taking what they say, that says. Or maybe not, that's fine. Or maybe not. And, and, and taking another share. point of view as well and, and come to their own their yeah. own opinion. My alternative point of that is in my experience, failure has been so painful that I would rather it didn't happen to people. My, my really? preference, yeah, my preference is for getting help getting education, getting experience, and by that, avoiding failures. Because some failures, I mean, th there are lots of people out there who go, hey, the, you know, the more you fail, the more you progress. And I'm going, oh, you haven't experienced catastrophic failure, have you? <laughs> you have not, you haven't, you haven't actually experienced how damaging a catastrophic level of failure is mm, okay. and so and so that's that's my my worry so to put this into context uh, my level of failure around uh reading and writing is 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 essentially catastrophic it's a it's a huge um it's a huge kind of weight it's a huge and and everything really that i that i do um is is kind of born out of 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 managing that catastrophe, essentially managing, and the and it's really the catastrophe, con, the catastrophe of utter confusion, uh, utter utter confusion as to why the world, the universe, does not function in the same way for for me as it seemed to do for the for everybody else on the planet. You know, wow. why don't I? Uh, why don't I function right? Why don't I fit in? What it, you know, what is it? What is it? Going? Complete, complete confusion. Wow. And so I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. It's like, oh yeah, you should experience that because it will make you better. No, won't. no, won't. you may never get out of it. Like the other people who are experiencing what I experienced. Okay. Most of them, most of them, uh, um, uh, especially if they were male, um, ended up in prison. Uh, the, the, you know the 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 mm -hmm. or in in addiction uh, because because the world just would not um, contend mm -hmm. with would not tolerate that it's a world we live in a world of, of letters and numbers and words and syntax and 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 so mm -hmm. um, you don't conform with that at a at a fundamental level and some of us do not conform even at the most fundamental level. Then there's a whole bunch that is shut down for you, and there's a catastrophic level of failure. Gotcha. Uh, and that's why I don't like it, and I don't think you should have to deal with it. So don't, so 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 please avoid it. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, well, I, I think that's I've I've uh, I've not heard that response before. Um, I, I'm genuinely I'm not shocked. I'm I'm uh, that's a lot to think about. You know, one of the things about failure is that you can't avoid it, right? That's the thing is that you you can't control necessarily what negative things happen to you. And in many cases, the flip side of failure is that you learn a lot about yourself where you don't belong, right? It's kind of like what you said where, you know, if you can't conform to the norms of the world, then you don't belong there. You belong somewhere else. And that kind of sets off an exploration of, you know, where you need to be. Sorry, I've got some noise in the background here. No, that's cool. That's fine. Uh, so, yeah, so under under those circumstances, Simeon, I, I would rather I'd say, can I pick my failure then, please? Like, can I <laughs> can I just you know pick one a little bit and and decide you know which failure I have and which failure I don't have, and can I pick what can I pick a failure that won't be you know catastrophic? Look, I I totally see your side as uh, uh, as well as this 
uh, and, it, and it's maybe not as extreme and bad as I'm, you know, uh, putting out there. Um, so, so partly, Simeon, I'm trying to create the antithesis yeah. Yeah. to your to your idea. Uh, just no, it's, more, it's more fun. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely awesome, Mark. Mark. And uh, when I timestamp this, uh, the post uh, production, when people see the rebroadcast, I will label this mark here as. Uh, an argument in the works or in the making of something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, really I good. like a good argument. I really like that. Okay. Um, very One last thing. Uh, yeah. if, if you were to give one piece of career advice, now keep in mind now, you're, and I know a lot of your audience are, are folks who are kind of similar to perhaps people that I engage. Um, give you an example, someone who's been, uh, you know, uh, promoted to SVP, now wants to go to the C-suite level, but is very unsure about kind of there's a concept, there's a confidence issue. There's always a confidence issue that's there. Um, it could be that, or it could be so sort of younger career. You pick one, but give one piece of advice that you would say, Hey, you need to kind of think about this if you're going to succeed or get to the next level. But what would that be? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so this is a piece of advice that was given to me uh, early on when I was in Canada and uh, I was working with uh, a client, and that client had um, had this little kind of flower lapel pin uh, that I didn't know what it was because I was new to Canada. You know, mm. a little kind of flower lapel pin, and I and and anyway, um, after a while, I got to learn what it was, and it's like the Order of Canada, and that, and I realized that that's like a really big thing, and that's like you know in Canada, it's super important. Okay, right. Right. and 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 I, I really like the idea of being best at something. And so I was like, so I'm quickly like, how do I get them? I think I would like one of those things. Anyway, so I always ask for help. And so, and so I say to the guy, I say, by the way, this thing here, I say, how do I get one of those? How would I get one of those? And this person said, Mark, just keep going. Just keep going. Right. Now, that I think was really good advice. And, and so that's the best advice I can give. And that is just be, keep going, be relentless. Okay. Mm. Just, just others will fall along the way. You're going to keep on going longer than anybody else. Right. right. Do what, do what yeah. you're doing, do it yeah. as best as you can, you know, make, make that choice and make it bigger and keep it tidy. Mm -hmm. Now, now you've done that. Now you have to be relentless mm. about it. That's my best advice wow. that's helpful that's that's very helpful i'm sure for many of the listeners um the way that i i liken it to uh some of my clients is that when you stop at a, at a sport it's really hard to get back on the saddle right so mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm into uh, martial arts uh and i and i spar quite a bit and um one of the things that is the problem is that if if even in your friend a fight a match and if you're getting plummeled left, right, and center, you're just not defending yourself very well. You can't stop because if you stop, you're 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 defeated, right? You can't get back onto there, and and so you just got to keep going. And I think that's part of the fight journey where you know sometimes you fight and you have to change dimensions, right? It's clear that it's not working for you, but your relentlessness is actually changing and doing something that's you're excited about, right? And I and and too often I what I see is people kind of they pause and they give up or they pause and they don't, they don't know what being relentless actually looks like. Right. Mark, I'm going to invite you back for another one because you have so much to talk about I'm, here. You're very welcome. I'd love to come back. Always great chatting with you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, quick, so rapid fire questions. All right. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. I've got a couple of them. Um, your alter ego profession. If you weren't doing what you were doing today, what would you, what would it be? What would you do? Uh, ask you not. Yeah, well, kind of, because I, yeah, I'd be Jacques Cousteau. I would be a, 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 I would be an underwater diver, you know, uh, flying, you know, traveling around the world, okay. you know, diving. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what book or movie title best describes your career so far? God, that's a really hard one. Um, I don't read many books. <laughs> you write a lot of books. I write a lot of them, but I don't. I sure don't read them, and I don't tend not to read any of my own. Either. How about movie? Movies then? Uh, but movie, um, <laughs> I'm just going to name it because it's my favorite film ever, and I don't know how much it describes my my yeah. my life or career, but it must do in some way because I think it's the greatest film ever made, which is Brazil, Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Okay. Yeah, if you don't know it, watch it. Okay. 
Yeah, I have to confess I don't know, but I, I will watch it. I'll look for that. Sure. Yeah. Um, last question I have for you: COVID hobby or habit that you've developed? COVID hobby or habit? Gosh. Okay. Habit: buying buying equipment to do this and working out what equipment works really well and what doesn't. And right. I mean, literally, is a habit. In right. the, there is so much junk here now that, that works or doesn't work. <laughs> like the amount of money I've spent, you know, a thousand dollar equipment, that one doesn't work very well. Here's another one for two thousand dollars. Ah, that's terrible as well. I mean, it's like you know, there's this, there's this, you know, garage jumble sale of of gear that right. I have around me right now. Like, like, you know, like what what does that do? Like, what you know, it's like, what use was that? I mean, ah. I mean, that's, you know, if you're sitting at home and you want to be relentless, then I guess you buy stuff, right? So totally, totally, because you want to be the best. It's like I want the image to be the best. I want the sound to be the best. It's like yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is that relentlessness of of I want this to be optimal. The best. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, I'm going to leave it at that, Mark. Um, I'm definitely going to have you back, and I know you'll say yes because you're kind yeah, of. Cool. And uh, but but thank you so much for your time. This was an enjoyable conversation, as I expected. And um, I look forward to the rebroadcast and, and folks who are going inter to interact with you. Uh, again, if you're watching this as a rebroadcast, reach out to uh, Mark certainly. And uh, you know he is a man of many many talents and a lot of thoughts and a lot of insights. So thank you so much again, Mark. Uh, have a good weekend. I'll talk to you soon. My pleasure. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Take care. Hey, okay, bye bye. Wow. So there you have it. Uh, so much to take away from what Mark uh, shared with us. I don't even know where to begin, but uh, I hope uh, I was taking notes mentally and uh, I will rewatch re this and, and the timestamps I'll put, put down what the conversations were about. But um, I highly encourage you to, uh, to share this with someone that is in need of some boost of confidence and maybe even knowing how to represent themselves in a better way through words and through action and, and sort of, you know, it's, um, it's not something that's, that's, it's an easy skill to learn, obviously. Uh, but something that Mark said was, it's also not something that you're, you're just born with. It's something that you can practice and learn from. So uh, the reason why I called him up today as, as a guest was because I, I knew that he had a very special, unique view on how it is that you survive throughout life and also in your career. So uh, until next week, we have a wonderful guest next week. Stay tuned for that. But uh, have a good weekend, and thanks for joining us.